Hello, how's it going everybody? This is Stefan Georgi here and welcome to The Art of Copywriting. Really excited to have you with me here today and really excited to go through this presentation with you. Um, this presentation will be all around sort of the elements of effective copywriting. We'll look at a lot of examples of different types of copy and I've tried to balance it to where it is valuable for people who are very early on and beginners and people who you are much more experienced, hopefully you'll pick up some, some ideas or thoughts too from it. Uh, but first and foremost, very importantly, right? who am I and why should you listen to me? So I uh, am a direct response marketer and copywriter. I've used direct response and, and my various voodoo powers to sell uh, around a billion dollars worth of stuff online. I've grown eight plus businesses to a million dollars or more in revenue. A lot of them have done eight figures, nine figures, uh, and so on. I've made tons of money as a freelancer and one of the highest paid copywriters ever, uh, as CNBC is pointing out here, like, hey, look, this guy made 1.3 million as a, as a freelancer. That was just from people paying me to write copy for them and stuff. Uh, Forbes has talked about me. I run a mastermind called Copy Accelerator. Uh, this honestly, I could have updated this slide. Um, it's a you know, new presentation, but I, uh, I had, took a slide I already had and put it in it. But um, yeah, it's more like, 300 almost people, um, copywriters, business owners who are uh, gener you know generating over a billion dollars per year in sales, all kinds of niches, all kinds of categories, um, long form, e-com, you name it. I really care about your success. The List TV called me the millionaire freelance matchmaker, and I'm a devoted husband and father, someone who uh, counts to himself as being pretty Darn lucky, that's me and my wife, Laura, uh, in Sedona last fall. Just really like that picture. This is my daughter, Eden, who is the goat, the greatest of all time, or the goke, the greatest of all children. Um, you know, if you have a child, I'm sure you feel the same way about yours. But yeah, just light of my life, love her so much. Had to get her in here. And uh, that's a picture of Rick Ross pointing at me. Rick Ross is a rapper, if you don't know. Um, not really relevant to the presentation. I just really love that I have this photo of uh, Rick Ross pointing at me. So, you know, I had to add that too. All right, cool. So with all that being said, what is copywriting, right? Let's start at the very beginning. Wikipedia says copywriting is the act or occupation of writing text for the purpose of advertising or other forms of marketing. Yeah, pretty, pretty much, right? In other words, copywriting is writing ads, right? So Anytime you watch a television ad, hear a radio ad, read a newspaper ad, watch an infomercial, or see an ad on Facebook or Instagram, uh, it was a copywriter who wrote that. And this copywriter could have been a freelancer, the employee of a business, or the business owner themselves, or an agency, but still someone wrote that copy. Um, and you know, for those of you who are watching this who are copywriters or aspiring copywriters, you may know this, you may not, but copywriters get paid quite well to do this, to write ads, provide they know what they're doing, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, there's plenty of different types of copywriting, but we're gonna be focusing today on direct response copywriting. And direct response copywriting is writing ads and promotional material where the person interacting with your copy is told to take a direct action, hence direct response. So for example, the person could be told to click here, order today, pick up the phone and call now, go to website and enter code blush at checkout, text hair to 44231 for your free kit. Right, schedule your free consultation. Those are all like um, called calls to action. We'll talk about those more in a minute. But the prospect is being told to take a direct action. And the goal is that after the person who has read or watched or interacted with your piece of copy, like after they've done that, they take an action. And by the way, right, this person we want to take action is often referred to as a prospect. Prospect just equals prospective customer. So why should you get good at direct response copywriting? So I do want to sell you on copywriting because uh, it's something I'm very passionate about. So for people out there who want a side hustle or a full-time hustle, it's a great way to make an awesome living. You hear somebody who joined my RMBC course saying that they'd 6X their $1,000 investment by getting one gig, you know, not too shabby for somebody brown, brand new, so they made like, you know, six grand really fast. Um, you know, this person, uh, Andy Jeffs, right, ever since I, they're talking about my course at RMBC, I'm not trying to pitch you my course in this, I just have a bunch of testimonials because that's one of my most popular copywriting trainees, right? So, um, you yeah, know, but ever since they got it, consistently made five to $10,000 per month, enrolled a bunch of high ticket uh, paying clients, doing all kinds of awesome stuff. Connor Boylan went from a freelancer making 65,000 a year to 
uh, making a hundred thousand per month plus as a business owner, a lot of it due to copywriting as well. And um, here's another one from Mario Castelli. But if you're a business owner, a uh, good copy is one of the essential keys to make more sales. And you probably already know that, right? Here's Jay DeBolt talking about how as they got better at writing copy, um, they could launch and refresh offers faster than he ever imagined possible. And now he can actually focus, Jay, less time on writing copy and more time on growing the business as a whole. Jay is a, um, the owner of Credit Secrets. Uh, they do you know healthy eight figures, brilliant marketer, awesome guy. Uh, Jeremy Reeves here uh, talking about how for his new offer, he started getting uh, two to 2.5x kind of ROAS on email drops once he started getting good at copy. Uh, Eddie Barrett here talking about how he just started writing copy faster. Um, I won't skip, I don't know. I feel weird. You, you do too many testimonials or something and you're like, start to feel self-conscious and whatever. But the point is just, I put it in there to be like, look, this stuff, this stuff works. It helps whether you're a freelancer, copywriter, um, you know, kind of, or a business owner, right? I think we can all agree or should be able to agree that good copy is super important. So my personal story real quick, that's me with a, uh, golden tan and a mustache when I was working at the outdoor school in Marble Falls, Texas back in 2011. So I had always been an unguided missile, bouncing around from job to job, location to location, living in different states, kind of like a vagabond, honestly. And um, there I was working at an, like an outdoor ed kind of program in uh, Texas and making $200 a week. I was in a double wide trailer with a roommate and five other trailer mates. Uh, and teaching kids about the great outdoors and I'm actually loving life. I thought maybe I'd found my calling. Uh, after the semester ended where I was teaching kids, I was gonna go to Florida and for the summer and sort of teach at a like a overweight camp, a camp to help kids who are overweight to kind of get healthy and exercise and lose weight, go back to the same outdoor ed place in the fall. Kind of finally felt like I had things figured out and then I found out that my dad had cancer and this was in May of 2011. I went back home to be with him and my family and by October of 2011, my dad had passed away and died. And it sucked, as you would imagine, right? Um, I'm glad I went back to be with him, but it, but it was tough. Uh, and after he passed away, about a month and a half later, early December, uh, I went and went to Vegas to, to kind of blow off steam and decompress and, you know, going through the, the passing of a loved one is very difficult. And I met a girl at a poker table named uh, Laura. At the time, I didn't know anything about her. She was just a cute girl who was at my poker table. And somebody asked her, what do you do for a living? And she said, I'm a writer. And I wanted to talk to her. So I said, what kind of writer? And she said, I'm a copywriter. And I said, well, a copywriter, that's, that's awesome. And I pulled my phone from underneath my table and I Googled, uh, what's a copywriter under, underneath the poker table? Because I had no idea. And that was my introduction to copywriting. But over time, um, you know, her and I spent more time together. We moved in together. I ended up taking a corporate job in South Florida that paid me pretty well and had good perks, but I still hated it. And finally I was like, hey, Laura, do you think I could uh, write copy too? And she said, yeah, you should try. So I posted a uh, classified sort of hire me as a copywriter ad on a website called Warrior Forum, went to bed, and the next day I had $297 in my PayPal account because two people had hired me to write a sales letter at 140, uh, whatever it was, $47 each. I don't know, got the math wrong there, but basically around $300, two people would hire me for around 150, you know, wasn't exact around that number, but right, right about there. So, you know, I was a monster after that, right? I was like, oh my God, I can get paid to write copy. And I took time, the feast and famine thing of being a freelancer, I quit my job, I'd have good months, I'd have bad months, I'd pawn stuff. Um, I really, you know, struggled to, to kind of get consistency, but over time I got mentors and I got good and I went on to launched my own health supplement company that did $23 million in a year, partnered in some other companies that did over $100 million in a year, um, you know, teach, train, coach, mentor, do all the things I do, and it all kind of came from copywriting. So uh, to me, it's, it's you know, a superpower, an amazing skill, and it's something that I think everybody should really take seriously. So what does direct response copywriting look like in the wild? You know, it can take a lot of different shapes, as you probably know, and uh, we'll look at some of those right now. So it's kind of funny, I'm on Facebook, right? Because one type of uh, copywriting is Facebook ads, which we're all, most of us are very familiar with, right? You're on Facebook, you're scrolling. Here's one from Jarvis. Funnily enough, this one was not written by a copywriter. It was written by their AI, but um, it's cool. Like, I mean, like I think, you know, people ask, is AI gonna replace copywriting? I don't think anytime soon, but um, you know, I think Jarvis maybe could be a cool complimentary thing that you could use and then you could improve upon it 
uh, for like really low class copy, but right, this ad was written by an AI copywriter. Hey, writing copy, if you do, we have good news for you. You can outsource your marketing to conversion.ai and let our robot copywriter Jarvis write all your content and copy for you, um, right? He's witty, charming, and has written over a million words of high-performing marketing content so far. We're talking website copy, social posts, ads, emails, and more, all with a few clicks. Try our AI-powered marketing assistant today and see how much more effective your ads will be by tomorrow morning. Try conversion.ai uh, risk-free for with a five-day free trial right now. And here's the ad, people liking it, interacting, right? Copy. Now, I guess, funnily enough, this is the one thing that a copywriter didn't write in my entire newsfeed, probably. But if I keep scrolling, you know, you'll see just tons of ads. Here's another one for um, some custom-made gut formula, right? All run by copywriters, Facebook ads, right? Text ones, video ones, usually having video and all of that. You've got YouTube ads, which you're familiar with probably, right? I just go to here and just find one. Let's see if we can add something. If you're looking yeah. for a CRM, get Monday.com's flexible CRM solution that can manage the entire customer lifecycle. Client projects and services, marketing campaigns, anything. It's easy to use. And Great. Copywriter wrote that. Native ads. May or may not be familiar with native ads. Let's do it. I actually can't, can't type in. Watch. My favorite thing is to go to weather.com. It's like the Weather Channel's website. I scroll down here and you get to sponsored content. Let's see. Don't ignore warning signs of type 2 diabetes, right? The point of sponsored content, this this big video is sort of a pain in the ass, but you know it's supposed to obviously um, kind of blend in. Oh, here's one, like Tommy Chong, stop wasting your money on CBD. Click on that. So that's the ad, right? Curiosity, invoking. We'll, we'll talk about the elements of all this stuff in a second. These are all native ads because if I click on it, where's it going to go? It goes direct to a sales letter here, um, a long sales letter about Tommy Chong CBD, and we'll actually look at this in more detail shortly. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, advertorials. Uh, give me a second to pull one up for you for that. All right, so here you got an advertorial for a dog food um, that is done by, uh, like a product that's done by Golden Hippo. Is this one thing, the key to improving your dog's health? Right, is your dog trying to tell you something? Looks like an article. This is advertisement up at the top. Scroll through, read stuff, and you have a link to watch the presentation here. And of course, you know, emails, promotional emails, you, you know what those look for. I feel like I don't need to actually show you really, right? Um, but one of the big things to remember is that a copywriter wrote all of this stuff. Um, and in addition to all of the things we looked at here, there are the actual kind of uh, sales letters. So this is gonna go to a video sales letter. Oh, apparently not, give me a moment. Right, so from the, the advertorial you saw, right? You click over to here and this is a VSL with Dr. Goldstein. They're known as Marty's Miracles, dogs sentenced to death, brought back to health with the methods of Dr. Marty Goldstein. One of the greatest cases I ever had is a Rottweiler named Whiskey. He so you've, I'm sure probably seen VSL's video sales letters before. This is an example of one. It you know goes for 40, 50 minutes, educates people. There's a whole kind of journey to it, tells them to buy. I know that they get millions of visitors a month to this page, or they have over time. Um, you know, I'm sure they've done eight or nine figures uh, in revenue to this type of product. And um, yeah, this is a beautiful video sales letter, right? And that's just one uh, example, right? You've also got more kind of e-com oriented rant, like you know, landing pages. Like, let me pull one up here for you to check out. It's from Ritual, right? It's time to clear up the facts. For skeptics by skeptics. I actually don't really like their copy very much, to be honest with you, but, um, you know, kind of more branded e com type of page. Um, and of course, you've got your text sales letters too. So let's go back to that uh, Tommy Chong one we were looking at a minute ago. Right, you click on that native ad, you go here. Tommy Chong reveals for the first time cancer saved my life, how nine months in prison, and a cancer diagnosis reset my health, restored my energy, and let me to discover the real reason so many people don't like CBD and what you need to do instead. And then you scroll through and it's a whole super long story about Tommy Chong and CBD and the discoveries and all that kind of stuff. And then eventually you have the opportunity to, you know, you're shown the product and you have the opportunity to buy the product, right? And this is from uh, my friend, uh, Steve, who was partnered with Tommy Chong on this. And, uh, you know, I know that the offer has done quite well also. So with that being said, let's go back to the PowerPoint though. And we'll get into a bit more tactical stuff. So. Give me a moment to go back to presenter mode. 
All right, right. So again, all this stuff was written by copywriters, right? So um, it sounds kind of obvious, I guess, but at the same time, it's like, do you really like? I don't know. Sometimes we forget people who are, who are trying to get into copywriting forget like how much work there is for them. I'm like, just go to your promo tab of Gmail and like scroll through, right? And there's like every email in the promo tab was was almost every single almost every single one of them was written by a copywriter. Go look at them, you know, native or Facebook ads. It's like every single one of those was written by a copywriter. Like people will get afraid of like from from the freelancer side. They're like, oh, are there enough clients? Is there enough work? And it's like, yeah, dude, there's like literally way more demand than supply for good copy, right? Um, and of course, as offer owners who are watching this, you probably already know that. If you own a business, if you sell products online, um, maybe you're a digital marketer, you're probably already aware that you know you need more copy all the time. You need more copy for emails, for ads. It's actually, it's crazy, right? Because I'm, I get to see both sides because I've been an offer owner. Right now I'm partnered in a company that does over 60 million a year um, and we're scaling to you know several hundred million a year. On the health supplement side, I run uh, you know, my mastermind, I've, I've run courses and probably I do tons of stuff. So I get to see that, but I also do freelancing work too. So I get to see both sides and it's like crazy that both sides, um, need each other, but don't always connect, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, going on to, you know, our important next question here, right? What makes copy effective, right? What separates the good from the bad and the ugly? So here's your essential checklist for good direct response copywriting. Uh, the first thing about good copywriting is that it immediately captures your prospect's attention. So you'll have a strong opening line, headline or subject line. Uh, often it'll, you know, the copy will invoke curiosity, it'll evoke emotion, and it will uh, present contrarian ideas. So here's an example for that Tommy Chong one again. Tommy Chong reveals for the first time, cancer saved my life. How nine months in prison and a cancer diagnosis reset my health, restored my energy, and let me to discover the real reason so many people don't like CBD and what you need to do instead. So let's go back to that. Strong opening line, headline, subject line, invoking curiosity, evoking emotion, and presenting contrarian ideas. Well, cancer saved my life. That's certainly pretty contrarian. It also invokes curiosity. There's an emotional component immediately with a cancer diagnosis, right? And this letter and this offer is not at all, it's not like a cancer cure product or anything like that. It's just like the true story of basically when he, he quit smoking weed got cancer and, um, you know, but then he basically went back, started using CBD and, 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 you know, he unrelated to like the CBD didn't cure his cancer. It was just, he felt a lot better after he started doing CBD basically. Right. That's like sort of what this story is about. And then there's a specific type of CBD that he likes, but curiosity, emotion, you know, contrarian in a way, right. Cancer saved my life. Well, that's not supposed to save my life. Um, all that's captured right in here. And this is just in like the headline. And I think this should be, something important, I guess I was gonna say obvious, but I'm gonna try to say it a lot because what's obvious to one person isn't obvious to another, right? But headlines are so important as are subject lines. And, and the reason why is because if somebody gets to your landing page and this part right up here doesn't captivate them, oops, they won't scroll down to this part, right? If they get captivated by this part, they'll go to here. And if this part is captivating, they'll go a little bit further. So this is true for like a long, like a text sales letter, like a long letter, but it's also true for your, you know, Facebook ads that are five minutes long or three minutes long or a YouTube ad that's anywhere from 30 seconds to 20 minutes long or whatever it is, right? But it really is that you have to front load it. You can be forgiven a lot of your sins later on with your copy if your very opening is really strong, right? So that's why it's super important. Here's another one from my friend, Jen Cam. It's just about getting your pants on. Um, and then we'll read the beginning. Stefan, some things are a joy to get started. The twerk worthy playlist, your wine of the month club, season one of Bridgerton, hey Simon. Other things, not so much. Unfortunately, the areas that challenge us, push us to grow, and ultimately change our lives typically follow a first step we don't really want to take. Um, now, Jen has a very uh, you know female heavy audience, as you may have guessed from this. Uh, she helps with people to kind of master their brand voice, uh, do live events, um, a lot of different stuff. She's awesome. but. Getting something the line kind of gets curiosity. It comes from Jen. It's just about getting your pants on. Um, you're like, what? You know, emotion here is kind of humor, right? There's an, that's still an emotion with like um, the twerk worthy playlist, your wine of the month club, season one version. Hey, hey Simo, some Simon. I'm like saying Simo. Jeez, uh, Simon. Uh, but like, right? Like it's like emotion. Um, not really contrarian on this one as much, but still, you know, 
very much captures your attention. Here's one from my wife's skincare company, Eden Beauty. Um, and here it's like what we stand for. Pure ingredients are hella powerful. No filler, no toxins, no fake stuff. Transformation you can actually see. Daily peel for dark spots. And to so try facial, um, daily facial for dark spots, save $100, try it, love it, or money back. Um, great ad. What was so great about this ad, right, is it's not, well, it's a little bit contrarian because it's like pure ingredients, no fillers, no toxins, no fake stuff. It's sort of a little bit defiant. It's sort of like the anti, you know, versus all the, the kind of mask skincare that this is better, right? Um, but the other reason for this one is like really attention grabbing is the image, that yellow background, the hand and the bottle is like, it really captures your eyes. So the reason I really want to include this one is so that you see how it's not just, um, the copy, but part of it is the ad overall and like the image and things, the color choice, things like that can play a big difference or a big role as well and make a big difference. Okay. So that was number one going back immediately captures your prospect's attention. This one immediately captures your prospect's attention, right? Number two, it focuses on the prospect and quickly answers the questions of what's in it for me. And that's another really important element of the copy, right? Because your prospect has a lot going on, right? Like if you, if you're on Facebook and you see an ad and you click on it, what are you immediately thinking? Like, I'm, I'll look at this ad, but like, I'm kind of curious, but I got a lot to do. I'm only gonna let myself look for a few seconds. That's what you normally are saying to yourself, right? Whether it's Facebook or you open an email and start reading or you see a YouTube ad or whatever it is, right? Like, well, I'll, I'll, you know, okay, fine. But if you're not pulled in immediately, right, um, then that's not good. You're going to leave. And you also have the question in your head of like, well, what's in it for me, right? If I'm usually clicking on an ad because it's, it's promising a solution to some pain point I have. So I'm like, is this going to solve this pain point? And if I think it's going to solve this pain point, I'll keep reading. So you need to immediately, uh, you know, kind of very quickly answer the question the prospect has, which is what's in it for me. So here's one from Dean Graziosi in this free book funnel, right? There are about 17,000 new millionaires every day in America alone. What's your secret? Get your free hardcover copy of Millionaire Success Habits today and discover what makes them different and how to follow the same formula. Only while supplies last. Get my free book shipped now. So what's in it for me? Well, I get to discover what makes these millionaires different and how to follow that same formula with the sort of implied claim that if I do that, maybe I can become a millionaire. Now the star is going to say, hey, no guarantee you're, you'll become a millionaire because Dean doesn't want to be sued by the FTC, right? But like, there's like, um, it's very quickly answering what's in it for me. Here's one from Digital Marketer and Ryan Dykes, right? Your homepage sucks. I, I love that from them. It's great, great subject line, you know, kind of like a little surly contrarian, right? Again, potentially all that. I know it's rough to hear, but it's okay. You're not alone. Most homepages are terrible because most marketers don't actually realize what a homepage is supposed to do, but I do, and you will too after this. Talk soon, Ryan. So what's in it for me? Well, if I go to the, click this link, I'm gonna get to see what a homepage is supposed to do, right? This is an email from their email list. And if I click here, I'll get to see it. It answers what's in it for me. It's also kind of contrarian and curiosity invoking, right? Oh, you don't realize what a homepage is supposed to do. Um, I think this is one of the better emails that I ever got from Digital Marketer. Um, I think they're hit or miss, but I think, I mean, I think they're, they're great. I just, not all the emails are amazing, right? But this one I really like. Um, here's another one. We guarantee our landlords home uh, rental income. Yes, you write correctly. Landlords who have rentals in Las Vegas choose us to manage their properties because we protect their investment. We protect them against any tenant related issues. We protect their time. And most importantly, we guarantee their rental income. Uh, powered by innovation, we make rental properties more profitable more predictable uh, and hassle-free. To learn more, visit our website or send us a message on our Facebook page. So cool, interesting value proposition. I got served this ad when I was in Utah, but I live in Vegas. We guarantee our landlord's rental income. So what's in it for me, right? Well, they're gonna guarantee my rental income, protect my investment, protect against tenant-related issues, and protect my time. Like really, I, I like this one a lot, and this was running with good um, engagement for quite a while because you know, it's like, it really does answer what's in it for me. I like the use of emojis too, by the way, here, right? So cool. Let me get, uh, let's take a pause for one second here to kind of remember everything, right? So number one was it immediately captures your prospect's attention, right? Number two is it answers what's in it for me. And now number three is it calls out the prospect's pain point and promises a solution. So this is what I mentioned a minute ago. Give me a moment here and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm right back. I gotta tell you, I love, um. I wish I was, you know, in Asia talking live on, on stage with everybody, but 
one async is that I can't actually just sort of pause for a second doing it from, from home here. But I'd rather be with you in person, hanging out, high-fiving, all that good stuff. Um, so again, number three of our elements, right? It calls out the prospect's pain point and promises a solution. I know I read it before, read it again, it's important. These are the fundamentals that if you get this right, these are, it, it's so easy for people to go away from this stuff and then be like, why isn't my copy working, right? And they can know a lot and go through a lot of trainings and, and do all this stuff, but they forget these fundamental things that if you just do these fundamental things correctly, you will be ahead of so many people, whether you're a freelancer or a business owner. Um, so my chair is creaking too. Anyway, let's continue on, right? So here's um, one from Carnivore uh, Aurelius, who's been you know running for quite a while, right? Um, eat beef liver, learn to fly. Beef liver and a crunchy crisp, no slimy texture or gross smell, but all the pure and powerful nutrition. If you want nature's original superfood, a food that puts multivitamins to shame, wait until you get addicted to these bad boys. Do we mention the grass fed? Get one whole month's worth of beef liver crisp in a single bag, and it's got some testimonials here, right? Um, but really for this one, okay, well, what, what, where's the pain point, right? The pain point is for a very specific market who's doing carnivore and knows that a nose to tail organ heavy diet is nutritious. So they believe that to be true, right? Um, they're like, yeah, I know I should eat more beef organs, but they're gross. So the pain point is like slimy texture, gross smell, stuff like that. The promise is that you can get the nutrition that, that comes from beef organs, right? But finally, the grossness. In fact, you'll enjoy it and get addicted to it. It's so good. So this is it. I wanted to share with this one first because we think about being this really hardcore, like, are you a 55 plus man who suffers from a bad back? Like, here's a way to solve it, right? And it's like, sure, it can be like really explicit like that. But like, you know, a lot of times it's a little more subtle. And this is one example. Again, notice the emojis, customer review, testimony. It's, it's a really, really strong Facebook ad. Um, here's one from, from Ty Lopez, along with Rudy Maurer, who is now the like CEO of a bunch of the brands they bought together. Um, imagine a behind the scenes tour and our ad managers with myself and the team teaching you how to run profitable ads. Well, for the first time ever in 20 years, you can, now you can, you now can learn Facebook, Google, and YouTube, um, ads with us, all our secrets revealed. Let my team show you how to become a traffic master and start running profitable ads. Um, I've been saying that e-commerce is the next big thing for a while. And if you've been following me recently, I've been buying big American brands that sadly hadn't adopted to the new economy. So this one I want to share as an example as it doesn't call out pain points, but it's a very clear promise, right? We're going to get into the ad manager. You'll see how we run profitable ads. Um, we'll reveal it all. And basically what my team will show you how to do it. Very clear cut promise in the very beginning in the headline. Here's another one from Masterclass, get your best sleep yet with tips from neuroscience professor and sleep researcher, Matthew Walker. Matthew Walker teaches the science of better sleep. Again, no pain point on this one, but a very clear promise. Um, the thing with pain points to look out for is with Facebook and other places is you can't really call out the user, right? You can't really say, hey, are you suffering from this? Right, like I mentioned earlier, you can't really do that on Facebook. So you're doing more subtle, which the, you know, um, Carno Carnelius Aurelius or Carnivore Aurelius, whatever they're called, they did a good job with that. Um, right. And then, but these ones are more about just like the promising a solution. Okay. Number four of the, the elements here is that they often include a good story. Um, one thing I want to mention about storytelling and why it's important is, is our brains were wired for stories, right? From the time we were, you know, around campfires, but whatever, how many, like hundreds of thousands of years ago, whatever it is, um, humans have been have been driven motivated and moved by stories and everything is a story and we, we are our brains are wired it helps us stories help us to make sense of the way the world is our place in the world um, why things are how they are um, and to, to cope with the vast mysteries of you know existence right and we love stories um, also stories generally have emotion not always but they often do and we tend to buy with our heart first and our brain second. So you get emotional connection through stories and that can then sell people. And then you can give them all the bullets and the stats and the facts and things like that, that then their brain uses to rationalize what the heart already wants to do, right? The brain's trying to justify what the heart's already decided. So stories do all of that, which is really powerful. So here's a cool example of storytelling in a very simple, easy way through like another uh, Facebook ad for these hand carved skulls. Master carvers from Bali spend two to three days carving each skull by hand with the intent to transcend the death of a beautiful creature into a sacred piece of art. 
Premium quality hand carved skulls by Skull Bliss. Genuine carved animal skulls stand up from the crowd with hand chiseled skulls. So really cool story about the product, right? And the whole idea is almost when you buy this, you can then tell stories. Like the, one of the, I think the marketing things here is that we're telling you a story, but then when, when I buy it and put it on my wall, then I can tell people the story of it and I seem more interesting. I stand out from the crowd, right? That's sort of the promise here. Um, but very nice way, especially with, with e-com, people always go like, how can I tell a story, right? It's like, there's there's a story. If you're selling a t-shirt, it's like, how was the t-shirt, you know, how, how do you come up with it? Or where does the fabric come from? Or you're selling like, you know, pillowcases, like what, um, what's the story of why you need to create a better pillowcase? Or what's the story of the thread count and why you went with a higher one, right? There's so many stories you can tell. Um, and I really think people neglect that and think that they have to ask only for like long, long sales copy, but it's just not true. Now here's one from a longer uh, sales copy. This is from Traffic and Funnels. Um, Multi-millionaire consultant reveals how a handful of coaches, consultants, and service providers use this coveted framework to double their output while they slice their workday in half. Finally available to entrepreneurs looking to surpass their business goals in record time, finish each week satisfied with their progress, all while enjoying more time for what they care about. So this is like their headline, right? Kind of about who's it for, the promises, stuff like that. What's in it for me? But then we come into like the story right away. If we have a baby, is it just gonna be me? One of the worst moments of my life was when my wife, Lindsay, looked me in the eyes and asked me that question. The words felt like a dagger twisting to my soul. You see, I was ready to start a family at that point. And it goes on here to say how, but he was constantly working, um, didn't have time for his family already, was struggling in the grind, even as a consultant or coach or whatever, and felt trapped. And his wife was like, I don't even know about having a baby because it would just be me because you work all the time. And that really cuts to the core of people who feel like they're stuck as coaches and consultants and they're sort of getting by, but they're never having free time. They, they don't, they can't travel. They can't do all these things they want to do. This is super powerful, right? And that's the story and it's leading. And that's a very good example of traffic and funnels has scaled to what, 50 million plus per year. Um, something like that. And they're over 30, but uh, a lot of it's through their powerful copy and other stuff too, they do, but um, good example. And here's the one from that Tommy Chong letter we looked at earlier again, right? Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. And if there's one thing people know about me, it's that I love lighting up, right? My wife jokes that I'm a walking drug test. If anyone under 30 recognizes me on the street, she assumes they do too. But almost 20 years ago, I quit cold turkey. More on that in a second. My health completely fell apart. All my life, people had been telling me that stuff was going to kill me, but quitting turned my health upside down. My joints began to ache like they never had. I was constantly tired and sore. I was getting up several times a night to pee, never getting a decent night's sleep, and on it goes. But right story. Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Here's a story about how uh, you know I quit cold turkey, but my health fell apart. Like, starting off a story. We're not talking about, we're not starting off like, hey, this is, something, this is selling CBD, right? But we're not starting with just like, I'm Tommy Chong. I've tried lots of CBDs, but this CBD is the best, right? You can do that. There's a place for testing that stuff too. But like, this is where like storytelling and longer form copy can be really powerful. People become, they feel like they know Tommy Chong. It's like Tommy Chong just wrote a letter to them. They get more connected. The heart first, then the brain, right? That's what we want. Okay, here's one from my, my friend, Dan Ferrari. Uh, awesome copywriter. Now he owns a uh, basement beast, which beast, which is a really successful health offer. But this is for his own personal email list, which he, he rarely emails out because he's out surfing and doing other stuff. But when he does, number one marketing lesson from the time my brother killed a guy. So going back to subject lines, is that it's like it's you know provocative. Uh, it definitely induces curiosity, right? Um, it goes right into a story. Actually, it was two guys. Hold up, don't freak out. They were bad guys. I'll tell you the entire story in just a moment. If you didn't know, this week marked the 244th birthday of the U.S. Marines. It was in service of the Marines and our great nation that my brother killed said bad guys. Warning, this email is going to be loaded with jingoism because my blood pumps red, white, and blue, and I harbor a near fanatical respect for our armed forces. But it's not just all about killing our enemies inside today's email. There's also a tremendous direct response lesson embedded in the story. I'll even give you a little hint. For 244 years, the Marine Corps has been the world's most feared war fighting force. So, again, he's like, what's in it for you, the reader? He's actually going to give you a really cool direct response, uh, you know, lesson. So that's what's in it for you. But right to a story, immediately captivating and interesting, right? Um, just awesome start to an email. Okay, number five of our elements. Remember, we've got six total. Let me pause for a second here and see. I'm going to do a sip of uh, water, but I want you to take a minute breathe into it. I know I'm going fast. I mean, I don't think I'm going that fast, but yeah, we'll chill for a second. Soda stream. Used to drink Pellegrino's. Yeah, you know, trying to like be a little better for the environment. All right, 
Conversational in tone. So important. Are there exceptions to this? Yeah. Like, I guess, a little bit of, like, B2B to, like, you know, C-suite executives. Even there, probably most of the time, people can be more conversational than they are. Because people go into copywriting and suddenly they become, like, they think they have to write, like, an old English bard where they're, like, you know, well, that's one thing they do. Like, like you know, like, dear sir, like, do you, like, I do proclaim, like, just, like, weird shit, right? Or they write, like, um... Yeah, I don't know. Like, they just write in, like, weird, like, old English. Or they write very, like, like, like I call it, like, the 1950s, like, uh, madman, like, voice or whatever. Where it's, like, you, too, can experience the wonder of... I was, like, what the fuck is that, right? Like, you want to write, like, people have conversations. Like, the bar stool test is what I talk about, right? The rules of grammar aren't as important. And then here's the bar stool test. Which is basically, like, I want to write that if I was just at the bar having some drinks, you showed up, we started talking, and you were telling me about some new discovery or some new product that changed your life, the way you'd be talking to me is how I want to write. So you wouldn't be like, it's true. Indeed, you too can experience the wonderful benefits of blah, blah, blah. You'd be like, like, look, it was crazy. Like, I was at the end of my rope. I was about to break down, and I saw this ad on TV. And at first, I thought it was totally bullshit because how many ads do you see, right? But they said something that really caught my attention. They said that, you know, whatever it was. And so I started doing more research. It turns out there's a ton of like amazing research about this. In fact, did you know, I read one study that blah, 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 right? Like writing like that is, that's what people want. Writing in this weird formal structured way is like, oh, I'm, you don't want it. Like why would, you don't want it to be an advertisement. I think part of this people are like, I'm writing an ad. I better make it sound like an ad. Like, no, you better make it not sound like an ad. Don't make it sound like an ad. It'd be much better if it doesn't sound like an ad. Okay, so back to Dan Ferrari. I'm not gonna reread the whole thing. Does this feel like an ad or a promotional email, right? No, it's like telling a story. Uh, here's one from Kelly Felix. My name is Kelly Felix and I must admit something embarrassing. Not long ago, I overheard some top marketers discussing me in private and what I heard was so crushing. They said what I was a has-been, overrated, a one-hit wonder, and although the words pierced through me like a knife, they were kind of right. I had once been talked about in some circles as a top marketer, but that was well over a decade ago. My peers were now on stage with Tony Robbins or Richard Branson changing the world, and my life sucked, blah, 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 but I have something changed. But, like, this is like your friend telling you a story of, like, um, you know, I must admit something embarrassing, right? Vulnerability, personal, conversational. Here's one from this guy, Ian Bentley. I don't know him personally, but he has this cool kind of case study program. Um, Ian, I brought courses and programs before, and nothing worked. Well, no wonder. Look at who teaches them. Most agency gurus out there have had nothing more than a side hustle for themselves. So now they're repackaging training they bought and peddling the same out of date nonsense. All my buddies who are turning over six to eight figures per month would never teach what they know. Why would they? They're busy using what they know to grow their agency, buy up competition, and so on. But some time ago, I actually sold my digital agency in a $20 million deal with a public company. Just Google Atropolis acquired. After spending some time away, I've decided to return. Not to build up another agency of my own. Instead, I'm here to make a change in the agency education space and personally help a small handful of up-and-coming agencies implement our proprietary approach for growth. It all comes down to abandoning the churn and burn retainer model and pivoting towards a paper lead or paper opportunity model. Learn more about what we did and how you can do the same by downloading my free case study here. Expect a light bulb moment. Uh, I'm not going to read the very end. But like, you see much more conversational? Well, no wonder. Look at who teaches them. Right? Short, punchy sentences, conversational. And this is for people who are like, you know, agency owners. This is kind of B2B, right? It's coaching, but um, I think it's great at really, really well done. So conversational and tone. And the very last one is, you know, should be obvious, but it contains at least one clear call to action. So back to the one from Ian Bentley called action. Learn more about what we did and how you can do the same by downloading my free case study here. And then right, um, click the link below to get the case study and learn more about how I can help. It's a very clear call to action. Call to action is to you know, learn more by clicking here, click here. I don't usually like using learn in my copy. Learn implies work and people don't want to work. In this case, for an agency owner, I don't hate it as much because they probably do want to learn. Um, but for like a consumer product, like where it's more like a consumer, you, you want to more, it's like, see how, I'll show you how, check out how, uh, find out how versus learn, right? From Tommy Chong. So choose the six ball package or any other package that's right for you below and secure your order today while there are supplies in stock. So you're going through the letter and then you get to this part of it, right? The Tommy Chong thing, call to action. Choose the bottle package, you know, and grab it now. So I went backwards. Here's one from Yoga Burn Booty Challenge, right? But 
add to cart, add to cart. And back to the skull people, shop now, right? Clear call to action, shop now, arrow, click this link. Dean Graziosi, get my free book, ship now, plus crazy bonuses. Get your copy, right, right now. Shipped in less than seven days. Okay, awesome, clear call to action. But one thing to note, and this will help I think, is it's a clear call to action. What I see people do is they make very uh, like complicated call to actions that are like, click here now to get my free book, plus see how you can imp- get more clients and or cultivate success habits, including some of the top ones from top performers, blah, 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 click here. And you're like, it's, it's like super long, and then people get like confused. Like, wait, why? I, you want it really clear, like, right? Like, action reward. My action is clicking here. My reward is I get a free book shipped to me. My reward is I get to, to learn more, right? That can be my reward. My reward is that I can shop for one of these things. But it's like very simple, click this, this happens. And not click this, and then this and this happens, especially if this happens, or if you're this type of person, then this can happen. So I know, hopefully you understand what I'm saying here. Very clear, easy, short, succinct calls to action, right? Beyond that, just think about other places where you see direct response, right? Radio ads, TV infomercials, newspaper ads, direct mail, newsletters, dating profiles, um, selling from stage, online listings, selling in person, selling over the phone. I think that's one important thing to remember is like what I just shared applies to all of this stuff. Um, When you sell from stage, you are selling something. When you present, you're presenting ideas, but you're selling ideas too. And so it's like the strong opening you know, contrarian or curiosity inducing, answering what's in it for me, um, you know, like all these sorts of things like are, are everywhere. They're all over the place. If you can sort of master these fundamentals, um, like I said, you'll be way ahead of everybody else. So, you know, that's about it. Thanks for watching. As far as how you can um, get a hold of me, I really should have uh, put the slide here and I didn't, but I'm going to show you real quick. Give me one second. All right. I'm back. Best ways to get a hold of me, Instagram at Stefan Georgi, Stefan Georgi right here. Um, come come hang out, feel free to shoot me a DM, whatever, or just follow me, you know, I put, them, put out good content. I mean, these are the pictures, but I put good captions below them too. And if you want, get on my email list at stephanpaulgeorgi.com forward slash subscribe. Send out daily emails. Um, one of my favorite things I do, if I'm selling something, then I'll sell you, all, you know, if I'm selling a course or I'm launching something, uh, but probably about 90% of the time I don't sell. I just, I'm like, giving you value, giving you insights, talking about high level stuff of copy, all of that. So I've got about 4,100 people on my email list. Um, everything from brand new beginners to owners of nine figures, in some cases, billion dollar companies. Um, and you know, I don't know, I have like 50% plus open rate because people love what I put out. I think you will too. So if you want more of me in your life, subscribe to my email list and you will get it. Beyond that, thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm just I'm thrilled to have gone to share with you. And hopefully you got some value from this presentation and hopefully I'll get to see many of you in person in the year and years to come. Have a great rest of your day and the rest of the summit and uh, we'll see everybody soon. Thank you.